folks and welcome to today's video which is an unboxing video. So a couple of months ago I unboxed Wonder Workshop's Dash and that was a programming robot that was meant for children. So what I'm unboxing today is Wonder Workshop's Q and this robot was brought out a bit later than Dash but unlike Dash which is still sold this has been discontinued so you can only get the second hand and I got this off eBay for £60 so whereas Dash was for children this was for teenagers and adults so it should be interesting so without further ado I'll get this out of the packaging and we'll have a look at it This fell out while I was taking that out of packaging off. I think that looks like it probably goes on here somehow, Paul. Mm, maybe. So it's in its original box. So it says, your robot, your rules. Uses Bluetooth, same as Dash. Robotics Amplified. Q builds your skills with games and challenges and makes programming your own interactive experiences fun for any skill level. Chat. Send Q text messages or discover its sense of humour. Snappy answers, crazy memes and jokes that will keep you coming back for more. Create. Discover a freestyle environment to programme robot adventures using Q's proximity sensors, encoders, gyro, accelerometer, microphones and more. Control. Engage Q's emotive AI with auto modes. Seek, avoid and explore to navigate tight corners or obstacles while smirking at each turn. That's quite interesting. So you can put it into a mode and then just watch it. Right. Code. Unlock Q's secret to coding for any skill level by easily switching between block and JavaScript programming. Oh, that is interesting, isn't it? Um, a toy with JavaScript coding ability on it. I wonder mm. how good that is. Q the clever bot, powered by breakthrough emotive AI. Q is a witty robot with attitude. Share your world with Q as it talks, texts and laughs with you. Sounds really quite a bit different to Dash, doesn't it? Yeah. Um... Dash doesn't really have like a mode you can just put it into and then it's sort of like autonomous. No, it's very weak, isn't it? The autonomous mode in uh, Dash. It doesn't really have one. No. Customise Q. Choose your favourite avatar and explore an amazing depth of personality, expressions and actions. Go beyond robotics with custom interactions that you'll create with Q. I are robot interaction. So that's infrared. Real time Bluetooth. Programmable LED and buttons. Three processors and sensor fusion potentiometers and dual motors. The same form as Dash, isn't it? Just a different colour. Yes. Same, same mouldings. Same mouldings. I don't know if the hardware is the same. No, I think the hardware is different from the sounds of it. It's uh, quite, quite a bit upgraded. So, let's get it out the box and <clears> see what <throat> it's like. So they're not supplied the power cord that would have come with it originally, okay. but that's no big deal. No, it's just a 5 volt USB adapter, isn't it? Got these connectors for putting accessories on and Lego. Mm -hmm. That'd be an excuse to buy some Lego. It could be, couldn't it? <laughs> so... This is just a warranty and warnings. There's no instructions with it. But I didn't get any instructions with Dash. No. You pretty much get all the instructions that you need from the app. Mm. Okay. So I'll switch on his power button, but I doubt he's got any charge in him. Oh, yes! That was a surprise. Hello, Q. 
So we can see he turns towards sound straight away. Mm. I think what we'll have to do is connect him to the app. See what happens then. Okay. So here's the app. Searching. <laughs> Select a robot. Nickname or use the one created for you. So we'll just stick with Coda, right? Stick with Coda, yeah. Continue. Wonder is where we test your robot tinkering skills and build powerful state machines. Next. Code is where we build legit block to text programs to make me do amazing stuff. Next. Control is where we race around and do some seriously crazy tricks. Those are the three that it's presenting. Let's go. This looks like it's the chat option. Hi there, want to see what this chat thing is all about? Yes. Oh. I thought you might. Let's take it for a spin. Robot control interactive story. Let's see what this robot control is. Drive sensors colours story. So is this a way of learning about the inputs and outputs? On, uh, Maybe. Computer? Let's have a look at sensors. Okay. Put your hand in front of me and see what happens. Doing see what happens. the sensor thing. Doing the sensor. Doing the sensor thing. All oh, right, it worked that time. So when you put your hand in front of him, he says doing the sensor thing. Okay. And it just seems like it allows you to do it two times. Clap and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> right, colours. He's so we tapped on colours and he just said red. Tapped on colours again. Green. Drive. I'm not sure he doesn't want to move your iPad. <laughs> Moving forward. So that was drive. And the last one is story. Uh -huh. Great. Please type the name of someone who can be the main character of our story. Just the name. Scout. Scout is a very heroic name. I expect great things. Now look to your left and tell me what object is there, not including your computer keyboard or mouse cabinet this is going to be interesting now tell me the name of a celebrity you can choose a movie star a singer a youtuber sports star anyone famous i'm a big neil breen fan really do humans really consider neil breen a celebrity if you say so well uh, yeah i mean he's He's directed and starred in six of his own movies and I think that makes him a celebrity. Scout looked out the window and saw two figures fighting. One resumed a human, oh sorry, one resembled a human, but the other looked weird, artificial, hiding bushes. Oh. <coughs> Scout hid in the bushes like a scaredy chicken and stayed in the bushes until the fight was over the end that's it okay quit you made it through the intro chat just barely let's see what else we can do together so there's an arrow at the top of the screen so that seems how you get out of this so i press that arrow so now i'm going to go to code okay so it says code move and then we've got naught out of four, so I'll click on that. Get moving, pick challenge, so we'll click on that. And in the top right hand corner we've got tab for instructions. Move, get moving, write some code to get your robot ready for the races. Can you help your robot go forward 25 centimetres? 
So here we've got actions, so I'll click on actions. Move 25 at speed 20. So I'll just pop that in there and then press play. And then it says complete, get moving, move challenge progress one of four, next step. Now try editing a block. Tap the numbers in the move block to change distance or speed. Can you help your robot racer to move forward 50 centimetres? I'll press play again. <laughs> Completed. Move challenge progress two of four. Next step. Move, never look back. You can delete a block if you don't want it in your program anymore. Can you remove a block so your robot racer doesn't turn its head? Just wants us to remove this block. So we'll try that out. Great job, complete, never look back, move challenge three out of four. Next step, move, wait, come back. Connect more blocks inside of on start to send more instructions to your robot racer. Can you add to the end of this program to make your robot racer come back after it waits? Start. So I decided to take the backdrop down to give us more room before we carry on. So the only way I could think to make Q go back would be to turn 180 degrees and then move the same distance. But you wondered if you could put in move minus 25. Yeah. But we'll try doing it this way first. It's turned 180. Now he's gone back. Totally <laughs> it says, great job, complete. So I've gone back and I'm going to see if you can put in minus 25. So I'm taking the turn angle out of it then. Yeah. And just putting minus 25. Yeah. Okay, we'll see if that works. So I'll press play. can move backwards mm. so you can do it both ways that's interesting so they set you a problem there and there was more than one way there's more than one way to achieve it which is usually the way in coding i think isn't it oh that was good yeah okay so i think what i'll do next is i go back to the first program and see what it's like in javascript so i've gone back to get moving and I've put the correct bit code in. So now I'm going to click this at the top and it says ready to code and text. You can switch your program back and forth between blocks and text at any time. So I'm going to press the tick. And now we can see what it looks like in JavaScript. Looks um, similar to Python, Paul. You know, if you numbered rows. Right. And then your things in brackets and your commas. So I've gone to the second little program now. And we'll see what that looks like in JavaScript. And, and it's exactly the same other than it's got 50 instead of 25 in the brackets. Now we've got the Never Look Back program. And what that looks like in JavaScript. And this was the last one, wait, come back. So this is achieving it by putting in minus 25. So it makes it go backwards. So let's see what that looks like in JavaScript. Ah, this is interesting. It's got actions move and then it's got logic dot wait. And then actions move minus 25. 
So I, I didn't notice it. it actually said wait two seconds in the Blockly. And then we've got the wait come back using the first idea I had, which was to make it turn 180 and then move backwards. So that in JavaScript, action stop turn in brackets 180. So I think that's enough of coding for this video. So the last thing we're going to look at is control. So this is what you get up on the screen. This bit in the bottom right hand cord corner says face lights. So let's look at changing the face lights on Q. So this is the first one. Second. Third. Fourth. Oh, that's interesting. That's the fifth. And this is the last one. So I think we'll go with this one. Next, we've got what looks like a picture of the sun. Click on that. So you can tap on the different lights of Q and you can change the colours by, by using a slide bar. So let's have a look at that. So I'll start with the one at the front. So you can have them off completely. Or, and that's the brightest you can have them. And then you've got the coloured slide bar. And you can highlight all of the lights to change them all at the same time to the same colour. So that was body lights. Not sure what this next one is. Sounds. Play sounds, slots or record over one. So all the sound slots just sound like this. Or you can press the record button to store your own sounds. So we'll tap on the next one. Auto mode. Time for exploration. So it looks like you've got three modes in auto mode. The third one looks like it's obstacle avoidance. So I think we'll try that one. So let's see how he copes with this. I'm all ears or sensors or whatever. So it says, put your hand in front of me, I'll avoid it. <laughs> I thought it was maybe a program that you would run where you would go round the room and avoid objects, but it doesn't look like that's what happens. That's a bit of a pity. Just have a look at the other two. This one. I spy with my awesome little surveillance eye. Put an object in front of me to push. <laughs> I like that. So I wonder if I can switch now to avoid mode. Ah, I see how it works now. You can flick between the modes. That's quite good fun. So let's check out the last one, which is this sort of diamond shape. Activating sensor shields. So uh, I can deeply sense things and emotions, but mostly things. <laughs> oh, this is auto mode. So this is when he'll explore and avoid objects. Well, I really like that auto mode. I think I'll probably put him in auto mode when I've got uh, Scout and Rocket and Luna having floor time. That should be interesting.
So next we've got what looks like a rocket. Blaster. Have you installed the blaster? I'll click on the question mark. Blaster power. Get started by attaching blaster power to your robot, then compete in avatar games using the project cards. I don't think we'll bother with that. And this is the last one. Gripper. Have you installed the gripper? Ah, right. So this must be some attachment you can put onto Q. But I haven't got that. So this in the bottom left hand side screen. This one here, yeah. This this is the last thing that I haven't tried. Mm -hmm. So we think that this might be for setting the ah, speed. Right, so a hundred. 90, 80, 70, 60. So I suppose when you've got it in... You're not afraid of a little speed, are you? Yeah. I say that because he's going on the lowest. Mm -hmm. So it must be when you put it onto one of the auto modes, you know, when he's exploring, yeah. you must be able to get him to go different speeds. We'll try that out. So we'll put him in explore mode. Right. So he's moving pretty quick. That's yeah, so that's him on at the top speed. And what? And you put him on 40 now. That's the lowest speed. And I'll zip it right up to the top again. <laughs> so what do you think of Q, Paul? Yeah, it's pretty slick, yeah. There's uh, a lot of sort of like gameplay with it as well as learning how to code him. Yeah, and, I'm uh, quite surprised at that. The voice and the sort of like the attitude it's got. It's funny sometimes. But, yes. Um, I find it a little sort of... You You're going to say nerves. it will get... I did actually think to myself it yeah. would, would get irritating after a while. Mm. But then it, I suppose you've got to... It forces you to make your own code then, so... <laughs> Yeah, you can customise it so that it's just the way you want to be then. Yeah, yeah. I decided to actually type out the little programs that I did so far mm -hmm. in the JavaScript so right. that I can look at it away from the screen yeah. and get more familiar with mm -hmm. the syntax. Yeah. You think that it's very narrow the java that you can learn yeah i it. mean from what i know about javascript it's it's um it's mainly meant for developing web pages and uh it, it's one of these object object orientated language languages which uh, i don't really know a lot about because i've only ever done a little bit of coding in c and not c plus uh, but it's something to do with like the um you know you've got these actions um, and then it's like you've got a subcategory move and then like some parameters that go with it. I think that's all that that sort of syntax makes it JavaScript. Well, I suppose it'd be an introduction to JavaScript. Yeah. Fairly awesome at these things. For me, I think it suits me because I don't want to be overwhelmed with something that I just feel like it's yeah, beyond yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think another important thing about uh swapping over from Blockly to a, a text-based programming language like JavaScript is that you can fit more on, on the screen if you're using an iPad. Well, that's iPad. the big problem that because I if, have. Yeah, if you're using Blockly, you, you rapidly run out of screen space, don't you? I did some coding on the MBOT a few years ago now, and I was just using the Blockly, and I found that it, it, it just got too unmanageable. There was just too much mm. on the page. Mm. So if you wanted to make a really sort of long program. Makes it very awkward, doesn't it? Moving yes. around the screen. Yeah. Mm. So in that sense, I'm quite excited that I can learn some of the JavaScript uh, for operating this uh, robot. Yeah. Because it means I'm not going to come up against that barrier. That's right. And I, once you've um, got familiar with it, it'll make it easier, I would think, if you did move on then to something else. It, it is a good introduction, yeah. If you've never had any sort of experience before. It feels like a step ahead for me, though. Mm -hmm. 
and being able to move away from Blockley all the time. Yeah. So you think you could go further with this then if you wanted to? I do, to. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So the, I think it's much better than the Dash robot. And I, I don't know. Well, I am. <laughs> I am. It's been modest. Yeah. And I don't know how much more I'll actually work with the Dash robot, mm -hmm. but I don't think I'm going to spend that much time with it. Whereas this one... You just think you will put, 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 put a bit more time in programming? Link. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's going on? <laughs> it's pretty good at getting out of tight spaces. Yeah. Now, it would be interesting to see the code that's um, making him move around like that. Don't you think so? But I think there's there's like 18 blocks of like mini yeah, lessons. Mm. And I'm sure you're going to do obstacle avoidance in one of them or but, some of them. So I'm yeah. sure you will see that code eventually. So you think that you'll have access to the code that's actually operating Q now? Yes, I do. Right. So, folks, that about wraps it up for this first video on Q. And I'll do an updated video in the future when I've worked through all of the programs that comes with it and then try to do some of my own. Mm. But that's it for this video folks. Thanks for watching as always and hope to see you next time.